getting all my props together. Hi team. Oh, hi Avaro. Oh, my sister just texted me. Her and mommy snacks are watching live in California. Yay! Mm. Tell girls wear heels from England. Yay! What time is it over there? All right, just two more minutes. Give me a couple minutes, guys, and just make sure I have everything in order here. You know, I got licorice in my teeth because I was eating licorice. Oh, and I've got Germany here too. Okay, so Voice360 says it's almost five o'clock in the afternoon. That's why I did this at noon. All right, guys, I'm gonna get started a little bit early because it sounds like we're ready to rock and roll. I just wanna say, I'm back with a new video. Hey guys, it is April 10th, 2020, and heartbreaking year um, since we lost our friend Sassy Snacks. Hopefully you guys are seeing this. It says that, okay, it says it's back. Yes. All right. Sorry about that. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, Lizzie did that. I'm sure she did. You know, I expected her to visit me last night in my dreams or wake me up from my sleep and she didn't. So I'm sure she knew. Hi, Poland. Hi, Dare. From Poland, I'm sure she knew that um, we were going to do this today, and she froze the link on purpose. So, let me tell you guys, I went through heck, heck, trying to get this set up today. So, I I hope it's working for you. We've got people here from Malaysia. We've got people here from Germany. We've got people here from all over the place, all over the world, and I'm really excited about that. Now, there's only Looks like maybe 37 right now, but um, you guys, that's okay. Um, this will post up later for those of you who are sleeping and who missed it, so so that's okay. Okay, so back to why we're here. I just wanted to say that, um, you know, it's been a year since we lost our sassy. It's my brother's uh second birthday now in heaven you know she died on his birthday one year ago it's been it's been crazy the first four months um my mom and my sister and i were just in tears um every day uh, the first six months maybe it's gotten a little bit easier now only because um i've been able to make some videos and to tell you guys the truth it's my therapy it really helps me to connect with you guys and it helps me to, to connect with her. Um, hi, Brandon. He's been, he's been texting me lately and he's been, he was sick over the last couple of years and he just found out that, um, Sassy passed away. And I can't tell you guys every day, it seems like somebody texts me or contacts me on social media and says, Hey, how come I'm just finding this out? I don't know why YouTube, um, I don't know what happens, but it was all over YouTube when she was dying. It was all over Instagram. We had a GoFundMe page set up. Um, we had everything that we could to, um, we did everything that we could to let everybody know because we, at the time she had 230,000 subscribers and actually I think she had like 225. And I think now that she is up to, um, still up to like 230, 231, 231,000 now. So her, her audience is still growing and that makes us, her family so happy because, um, she touched so many lives and she continues to touch lives. Anyway, she had told me several times that all she wanted to do was make a difference. All she wanted to do was know that her time on this earth um, mattered. And you guys have 
shown me and her mom and her sister and all of her nephews that she did matter. So many of you guys sent gifts and cards and I'm going to tell you, I, I still can't even look at the cards because it, it, it breaks my heart. Um, but you sent them before, during, after you sent her so many things. I did find this one gift that I wanted to share. Somebody sent this to her when she was sick. And I just want you to know, I still have every single thing that you guys sent to her. Um, I, I can't part with it. And um, so until it breaks or whatever, um, I want you to know I still have everything um, up in her room. And um, let's see, I'm going to read some of the comments while I'm still commenting about Sassy. Okay. <sighs> thank you guys for the sweet comments. Um, and thank you for the support, Edward and Cuban Cafe. She's, I talk to her all the time. Um, and yeah, Sassy is coming through with pegs today. And a lot of you guys, Alvaro is saying that she helped you through PTSD. And so many people who've had anxiety or who've had um, um, trouble sleeping, a, a few of you um, said that she helped you through your pregnancies. So um, anyway, I'm just thrilled and honored that I can carry on um, with her videos. I know I don't um, videotape as much as she does, but especially now with the quarantine, it's hard to get out for food and interesting things to eat. And I don't live in Los Angeles. Um, I don't live in Los Angeles. Uh, so I don't have as, that as much access to, um, one moment, I'm doing some monitoring right now. I don't have as much access to her, the foods that she had access to. So, um, again, this is Sassy Snacks, Sassy Snacks Memorial Day. So, um, what was supposed to happen was my family, all of my family, my mom, mommy snacks, my sister, older sister snacks, and my nephews and my son were all supposed to fly in and, um, I'm going to move this down just a touch. Um, they were all supposed to fly in to Georgia and we were going to have a memorial at her memorial garden, which I have put in the backyard of my home. And of course, coronavirus happened and that kind of sent everything to, um, I had a trip to New Zealand planned and I didn't get to do that either, but God has a purpose. He works in mysterious ways and I think Sassy Snacks has a hand in all of this as well. But, um, so I want to show you, um, share a couple things with you that we probably would have talked about, um, at her memorial. Um, I want to thank, um, Scented Slime by Amy. She, um, she still smells pretty good. She made this, uh, special slime as a fundraiser for, um, when Sassy was, was sick. Oh, you can hear my dog in the background. Sorry about that. And, um, so I want to thank her for that. And I want you to know that I still have it, Amy. And one of these days I'm going to play with it on one of my videos. And then I wanted you to know that, um, you know, Sassy, she really enjoyed like cooking and baking and um we miss that about her her family and i uh just we miss those things about her and um i got her license to cook wisconsin style remember that um she did a video on the i think it was an apple tort um from this cookbook and i had gotten for her i bought it for her in wisconsin i always bought her cookbooks everywhere that I went so that she could do something new and exciting for her channel. And oops, sorry about that. Um, I also got her this one. Uh, she talked about it. I think, I think in the, the video that she did in Georgia, um, I had just given it to her. She'd come to visit. 
uh, in April of 2000, and I had just gotten back from Ireland. No, it was 2018, April of 2018, and I had just gotten back from Ireland and shared this, um, bought her this cookbook. So, you know, that's the type of person she was, and she was also very artistic. I wanted to share some of her art with you guys. Yes, she did like trying different foods. She loved food. But you know what's funny is some people think that um, she loved she loved black licorice. Some people think that I got this in England. Some people think that um, she ate bad all the time because of the stuff that she ate on her channel, and she didn't. She actually um, was very what she ate because her stomach was having problems all the time. Uh oh, we're getting an unstable connection again. Hopefully it fixes. Um anyway. She um really was a healthy eater and that was because of her stomach issues, but of course she didn't know she had pancreatic cancer. Hmm. Other people are telling me about their the trips that were canceled. I hear you. I have yet to receive a refund of any kind. We'll see. Hey. Who's this? Anybody? Someone's asking me if I like black licorice as much as her. That was um, Julie C. Not really. But I found out that the trick was to buy the good stuff. So when I went to um, with Mr. Darcy, yes, Patty, it's Mr. Darcy. Sassy had a, she loved Mr. Darcy. As a matter of fact, that's why she named her dog Mr. Darcy. You guys know that. Um, but she, um, she loved black licorice. And um, so I bought some when I went to England. And that brand is actually pretty good. But usually I go to Cracker Barrel. That's where I buy it. Um, Sassy also started a channel called Sassy Crafts. If you haven't seen it already, it's Sassy Crafts with a K. And when she was really struggling with the eating, which was about within the two years before she passed and before she moved to Georgia, because of course she had cancer and she didn't know it. Um, she did a she started a sassy craft channel. I don't know why the lighting is do, doing that. She started a sassy craft channel and she wanted to um, keep you guys relaxed with her crafts. And some of you guys purchased this on I think Etsy. By the way, if you guys purchased some of her artwork on Etsy. That's it. That's all I that's all I put out. It stopped selling, so I took it down. So you guys have a treasure if you bought one of these on Etsy. I wanted to share something else with you about my sister. She loved um she loved watercolors and she loved nature, so anything that she could paint. Um I have right now a little pile down here of her paintings. And um, anyway, I wanted to share this one with you. And this one with you. I've been going through the attic and going through her things. And um, it's been hard the last week. And I just wanted to share some of the the things that I found um, that she drew. Okay, yeah, I think she. Somebody said Cuban Cafe said that Sassy's going to Sassy's going to mess with me during the entire broadcast. I know she is. She's right here. As a matter of fact, I made some of these as well. Um, after she passed, and my sister, big sister snacks, gave me this little charm and actually I have a little bit of her ashes in here right now and I don't know if you guys noticed my earrings I made these 
because they look like her wig and they look like her makeup bag. So anyway, um, back to her artwork. Well, I was going through her things um, over the last couple weeks because we've all been quarantined because of coronavirus. What I found. What do you guys think? Does it look like her? Hello from Qatar, Western Asia. That's amazing, you guys. That is so freaking amazing. That, But this is, she touched people around the world and not just in USA, not just in Great Britain, even though you guys are my friends. Um, she touched people around the world and she did this, um, she did self, this self-portrait 10 years ago and I just found it. Uh, Sarah says, I started following your channel after she passed and I'm glad you're keeping her memory alive. Guys, it's the least I can do. She's my sister. And um, I can't, I just can't even tell you how we felt um, when we found out she was as sick as she was. And I cannot tell you how um, hard it has been for Mommy Snacks and my sister and myself after losing. Um, Sassy and our brother within uh, five months of each other, within six months of each other. Um, but you guys have been there for us, and um, it's wonderful always to read your comments and know that you're still enjoying her videos and that you're starting to enjoy some of mine. And I'm, like I said, I'm not as constant or consistent as sassy was but i hope in the near future that i can be another thing um i started making because of the covid19 i started making these masks and um i want to thank kathy for donating um some to was it caroline carolyn or caroline in uh, new york city and she, what she did was she bought four online and then um, I donated the rest. So it's her donation. I just, it's one of the things that I do to keep my mind busy and just try to remember the good things about SAS. Um, so now what I'd like to do is um, go to your questions. And so I'm going to read from here and I just I'm kind of all over the place I know that and I'm sorry you guys it's a tough day and I'm alone instead of with our, um, our family and so if you have any questions or if you just want to say something about sassy that maybe nobody else knew about I can read them and I'll try to answer your questions or um you know I'll just acknowledge that you guys are here with us and mom and sister are watching. Hi guys. Hi mom. Hi sister. And um, so let me see what's going on over here in the comments. Hopefully nothing bad. Okay. Jane, how did you become so good at editing? You're a pro. No, I'm not. Actually, that's one of the things I'm lazy about. I, um, the filming is not a problem. It's the editing because I make so many mistakes and like I'll have like food in my teeth or I'll, um, the scout will be barking. I have to cut a lot. So I just do it. Um, because I have to, okay. Are you ever going to tell us what her real name was? Just kidding. Jonathan, Jonathan, you know I can't do that. She, no, if I did that, she would cut me off. She'd cut me off forever. Like, I wouldn't even be able to post videos. So, um, what was Sassy's favorite song? Who knows it? I know, I know some of you know it. I know one person knows it. So, I'm going to see if somebody can pop up with it before I answer. But don't let me forget to answer that. What kind of scotch whiskey did she used to like to drink? Okay, so here's the thing. When we went to Scotland, 
we went to Oban, Oban, to the distillery, and and we bought some whiskey there, and we tasted it. And then um, we went to Portree on the Isle of Skye, and we um, we took a drive, and we went to the Talisker uh, Distillery, and we tasted that. Okay, we about choked when we tasted the Talisker. The Talisker is very peaty. It tastes like peat moss. And actually, to us, Americans, maybe not all Americans, but at least to her and I, it tasted like an ashtray. So um, we didn't like that. But um, Oban uh, was actually good. And she liked that. But I think is Famous Grouse. Is that Scottish? No, I don't remember. But anyway, I like Famous Grouse. Um, now, it might be kind of ghetto. I don't know. But anyway, it's good. And that's what I drink. Okay. Sassy's favorite song. Was Sassy preci very precise in everything she did? Yes. She strove for perfection in everything. That was Zoe King. Um, from her, um, it says right here, um, from her grammar, uh, everything that she wore. That's another thing. Um, she, Sassy's probably really mad at me because like, look at my nail polish is chipped. And um, sometimes I come on here and, and my makeup's not all wonderful. But anyway, she was a perfectionist about everything. She always said that I rushed things too much and she was probably right. Sassy always made me laugh and replied to my comments. I'm glad she is. She was pretty funny. Matter of fact, when um, she was alive, and I know you guys have seen some of these, but you know she used to do the um, the bitmojis, and um, she and I used to have full conversations in bitmoji. I mean, we'd just send them back and forth, back and forth, and oh my god, we would be laughing so much, and I so miss that about her. Um, okay. Um, what was Sassy's biggest pet peeve? Ignorance? She did not like ignorance. Like, get educated, you know? Uh, you know, look it up on the, look it up. Um, she did not like, I don't know. That's one of them. Somebody else can probably think about it. Um, Brandon says he's purchased a mug. Uh, if you guys want Sassy merch, Listen, I'm not making a ton of money off of it. And the idea is not for me to make money. The idea is to build her website, sassysnacks.com. Um, it's up. It's running. It's okay like it is, but it's not perfection. And it's not being updated the way I want it to. That's all I'm trying to do. Um, so if you want to buy Sassy merch, I do have it on teespring.com. Go to the Sassy Snack store and you can find, um, shirts like this and also the mugs and there's different kinds. Some that say good, some that say I pray for my haters. There's some totally different kinds. I haven't updated it in a while, but, um, there's stuff on there. Uh, let's see. I tried one of her famous sodas. It was terrible, but it reminded me of her. I'm glad you guys are trying different sodas. I, I'm not a soda person. That's the other thing. But um, she loved to try her favorite sodas. Um, you mentioned that she that she comes to you. Does she come to you in your dreams? I've made so many. <laughs> oh, Matt, I've been waiting for you. Hold on. Let me go back. Um She's only visited me once in my dreams. If you guys, if she visits you in your dreams, please post it on Instagram. And some of you have done that. And I thank you so much because um, when she first passed away, you guys, so many of you sent me um, information that she visited you in your dreams. And oh my God, it was, it was awesome because everything she did was telling us that she was okay and that she was in the light and that she was with the Lord. And I know she's with my brother and I know they're having a party up there right now for his birthday. And she probably baked in the cake. Somebody sent me that message earlier. So I'm certain that she did and that they're just both laughing at us right now. I'm positive. Um, but other than that, she hasn't visited me and I'm waiting for her. Um, 
to come. Okay, so Matt, um, who knew Sassy very well, um, says that her pet peeve, <laughs> bad drivers. Yes, <laughs> she hated bad drivers. Um, guys, you know, hit the signal before you change lanes. Um, slower traffic in the U.S. goes to the right, faster traffic to the left. That's just the rules. That's how we, that's how we roll. And, um, but yeah, that was one of her, um, her pet peeves. Let's see. I tried to make potato tacos. <laughs> I don't know how all well that's going to turn out if you're in Wales. Um, oh, my U.S. Air Force sister's on, Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. Um, Alvaro, Bonnie, Brandon. Okay. What was her favorite song? Matt, I know you know it. Uh, but I don't see it up here in my video feed unless it, it came up here. Um, I'm looking, I'm looking. Biggest pet peeve. Let's see. Soda. She likes sodas. Okay. So somebody says, oh, hi, Alan Snacks. I see you. I'm glad you, you made it here. Um, her favorite song. According to Matt, apparently she told Matt, but she never really told me, was Afternoon Delight. Hi, Hazim from Egypt. Egypt. I can't believe I just said that. Hi, Egypt. We have people here from Egypt, folks. That's pretty freaking cool. Um, yeah, she liked that Afternoon Delight. I can't remember who sings it. But she also liked, and we got people from Ohio. She also liked, um, you remember Linda Ronstadt came out with that um, Mexican album, Canciones de Mi Padre. She loved that album. Um, I never would have listened to it if it hadn't have been for her. And it was really beautiful. Oh, my God. I remember she told that. Okay, yeah. Afternoon Delight. Yeah, who knew? I never knew it. I know that song was kind of weird. Um, Really quick, I wanted to point out back here, my sister is my hero. One of her subscribers sent that to me uh, last year when she was sick, along with a whole bunch of stuff to use and take with me to chemotherapy um, when I took her, because I used to drive her everywhere because, you know, she was under a lot of pain medication and couldn't, couldn't, I mean, it. the pain medication was so bad she was hallucinating at times and um anyway I, so I had to drive her everywhere and mommy snacks held down the fort at home at her house and took care of the the cleaning and the cooking and um one of her subscribers sent me that along with the chemotherapy stuff to do kit and I'm sorry I can't remember who it was but thank you thank you for that um, and thank you, everybody who sent her a card, who sent her a letter. I mean, some of you guys wrote just some beautiful notes and she read them. She read all of them. And thank you. Thank you for doing that. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. Um, yeah, my, uh, my cousin's on here. She says, I'm amazed at how she touched people around the world. When my sister was alive and even afterwards, um, it was the one thing that brought my mother comfort was how many people she touched around the world. Like she just, mom could not get over it. Um, how many people were contacting her and, and sending her things and just sending her notes and, and words of um, words of hope and words of wisdom. So Thank you guys again. Uh, you really helped us through a very, very difficult time. Okay. Um, so Brandon asked, did Sass know in the end or was it sudden? So one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is that it's April 10th and this is the day that Sassy passed away. Um, my sister, my older sister had flown in from California the day before and literally um, that evening of the of April 9th, um, 
my sister was our, uh, my sister Sassy was already in hospice. Um, she couldn't, she wasn't communicating anymore. She had stopped talking and communicating about April 6th. Um, it was just her, her body was starting to shut down. And um, Perth, Australia, very cool. Um, anyway, she, um, she was uh, not talking for about four days before. Anyway, we really had no way of knowing when that time would come. We didn't, there was nothing to say, okay, this is going to be her, these are going to be her last words. This is going to be your last conversation. Um, so I kind of just kept talking to her and just telling her to, that if she saw my brother to go with him and she did, and she went with him on his birthday last year. But, um, um, I say that to say, um, she only knew she was sick. She only knew she was really sick on November 20th, 2018, when she got the official diagnosis that it was pancreatic cancer. This is why it's so important that you guys wear purple for Sassy on the 10th of every month and share about sassysnacks.com because had she found out about this a couple of years ago, she, we may have been able, they may have been able to do surgery they may have been able to um, catch it before it spread. They may have been able to uh, give her chemo before she got so sick. Um, they may have been able to do so many other things. So it's really important that you guys understand, everybody, everybody understands the signs and symptoms of pancreatic cancer. And that's why uh, we have sassysnacks.com on the web for you. So please, please visit that and, and spread it, share, share the, the word with everybody. Because let me tell you something, when she was in the hospital in, ex, in excruciating pain on Thanksgiving of 2008, typical signs, and I'm, I may lose you for a second here. Those are the typical signs. Um, yeah, every, everybody should know, you know, those are the typical signs. And we just looked at each other like, well, that's really interesting because we couldn't find that information anywhere. And her regular doctor apparently had no clue that that was a, that those were the signs because she went in there complaining about every single sign and sy symptom that there was. And nobody put two and two together. Not one of her doctors put two and two together. So I'm saying that to say, please wear purple for sassy on Instagram, hashtag purple for sass. Oh, wait a minute. I have a, I have a, a helper card. Hashtag purple for sass. Purple for sassy. E at the end is important because there are other YouTubers that copied sassy's name to get more subscribers. And um, there's only one sassy and there's only one sassy snacks. So, and she's the one in true uh, ASMR queen. I'm telling you that it's a fact. Um, um, hashtag it, go follow me on Instagram and hashtag it. When you wear purple for snacks, take a picture and, um, hashtag it so we can see, uh, the pictures. So some of you guys have already done it. There's already a little, um, Instagram hashtag for purple for sass. So if you go there, wear purple, please, please post it and spread the word about pancreatic cancer. Yes, she is the OG. Thank you, April. Um, someone says, I still can't believe how some of the doctors treated her symptoms. You and me both. Um, that's scar letting, uh, you and me both. And I want to tell you, I'm going to tell you live because I've said it in several other forums, but I may not have said it live. She complained of a tumor. She texted me one day and said, I have a tumor in my stomach and it scared the living daylights out of me. And I said, you need to go to the doctor. I have her records. She went to the doctor and she was completely blown off. 
They didn't even do a test. They didn't do an x-ray. They didn't do an exam. They told her, oh, that's your sternum. Are you hearing crickets right now? Because I just can't believe that any doctor would respond with that. I'm going to adjust this. I can't believe any doctor would say, oh, that's just your sternum. When somebody walks in and says, I felt a tumor in my stomach. And that's exactly where her tumor was. And it was inoperable because it was wrapped around a um, an artery. And that's why she is gone now. And people like um, Alex Trebek possibly are still living because hers was in a place where they couldn't do anything for her. Hi, Linda. I see you made it. <clears throat> so really quick, I don't, you know, I'm trying to keep this uh, stream to about an hour. I started a little bit early. So I want to say a couple of things. Hey, if you guys are out there fighting the good fight during this coronavirus and um, you are a nurse, a doctor, a police officer, a firefighter, if you're working at the market, if you are, I got my police, I don't know if you guys noticed, I got my police bracelet on. If you're working at the grocery store, if you're doing deliveries, if you're working for Amazon, I've been keeping my Amazon guy quite busy. If you are still working and whatever, you know, out there, thank you. You know, we were laughing because Sassy was a germaphobe. And uh, let me tell you, she, I got something on my finger. I, I think it's, I think it's ink. Um, she did not like other people's germs. And um, I think she would have freaked out a little bit at this, but I think she would have enjoyed working from home. <laughs> so I hope that most of you, guys are working from home and that if you've, you know, if you've lost your job, hang in there, guys, we're going to get through this. We are. And, um, somebody asked me what kind of doctors, what kind of doctors, um, were these that did not diagnose her? They were, uh, her, um, what do you call it? Practice her regular practitioner her, you know, the one you go to when you say, I don't feel good. Interestingly enough, one day she was so sick. She's like, I need to go to the hospital. But I was at home and she was at her home in Georgia and we lived two hours away. And I said, I can't take you. I obviously I can't, you know, I couldn't take her that day. I said, you need to go to go to the emergency room. So she took an Uber to the emergency room. Well, you know, when you go to the emergency room the next day, the, or the, they tell you to make an appointment. So she made an appointment with her regular doctor. And that that doctor was on a day off. So it was another doctor, a female. Is it possible that this is, you know, in my in my head? And the doctor said, no, you have specific symptoms and we're going to get to the bottom of this. And that's when the doc, that doctor, not her regular doctor, this new doctor ordered the CT scan with oral and IV contrast. And that's when we found out that it was cancer. But of course, by this time it was too late. I'm just letting you know, um, not all doctors are good. Many are, many are, but unfortunately um, hers was not. Okay, so going back to the questions here, I miss her so much. This is from Emily. So I'm so glad she had you to advocate for her and pancreatic cancer. My grandma passed away from ovarian cancer five years ago, and I hope to do the same on her behalf. Let me tell you, pancreatic cancer, ovarian cancer, killers, brutal, brutal killers. Let me tell you, if you feel anything wrong in this stomach area uh, and you know it's not right, CT scan, oral, IV contrast. Blood work is not going to find it. I know you've heard me say this before, but I'm telling you, blood work alone may not find the cancer. The blood work found the cancer when she was diagnosed, and that's because it found it in her liver. Ridiculous. Okay, primary care physician. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. It, Patty, thank you. It was her primary care physician that um, kept on giving her 
stuff for muscle pain and stuff for anxiety. So somebody asked Jane, is cancer missed in America as people have to pay in the UK? I'm sure you know, healthcare is free and cancer operations are too. I think it just depends on your doctor and your insurance and possibly your the system. So in the in the US, um, I can have one kind of insurance. My sister had another kind of insurance. My other sister has another kind of insurance. And if it, you know, it just depends on the doctor if the doctor is going to recognize the symptoms. So I. I think, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Um, I don't think it's any more or less, but generally what happens in the U S is that, um, the doctors try to deal. It could be this, but we're going to, we're going to treat this thing down here first. So if you go in there with a headache, yeah, it could be brain cancer, but we're going to treat you for migraines first. And then you go home and you wait three months and the medicine doesn't work. So then you go back. Okay. Well then it could be that it could still could be brain cancer, but we're going to treat you for this next. Okay. So you go home, you wait another three months and you're still having head pain, but now it's getting worse. Okay. It could be brain, a brain tumor, but now we're going to treat you for this do you see what I'm saying? And I'd say 90% of the doctors do that instead of saying, Hey, you know, let's, let's go, let's see if it's cancer. And if it's not cancer, then we'll treat you for something else that it could be. Instead of doing that, they, um, they immediately start treating the symptoms and not the problem. Okay. Hope that makes sense. Um, let me see. Thank God the country I live in Qatar uh, closed so many places quickly before many deaths occur. That's, I think you're talking about the coronavirus. Yeah, guys, you mean here we are at home, you know, so we might as well be here together, right? Was Sassy political? Uh, yes, but I'm not going to tell you what she thought. <laughs> <laughs> um, she definitely was very strong in her beliefs and in her belief system. So let's see. Uh, I went to the doctor and complained of a small heart pain. They straight away put me in for a scan the following day. America seems to react differently. I don't know. Am I alone on this? Let me know if you guys, what kind of experiences you have had um, going to the doctor with certain pains. Please discuss your experiences with law enforcement in future videos. I'll try. It's got, I got to be really careful, but I will, I will try to do that. Um, my mom passed away at the age of 58, only two months after she found out she had colon cancer. Very sorry to hear that. What was the cause of her cancer? So pancreatic cancer, um, generally, very generally and loosely, is common in African-American males, people who drink, people who smoke, and people who are overweight. Uh, and if you're over 70, Sassy met none of that criteria. Some people think that it's because of what she ate and blah, 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 blah. Mm. Lots of people, I've already had that discussion earlier, and it, that really wasn't the case either. It's not, although it is a lot to do with what you put in your body, it is not everything to do with what you put in your body. Um, they kept on telling us that it was a, it's a mutated gene, something to do with that. So, and we have no family history of pancreatic cancer. There was none in our family. We had some cancer in our family, a couple of breast cancers, my cousin who's watching right now her mother was my sister's godmother and she uh, passed away from cancer and those are really the only two closest cancers that we had in our family and my my dad had lung cancer but that was his own damn fault because he smoked like a chimney I say that to say 
pancreatic cancer can hit anybody at any time, at any age, no matter what you eat, no matter what you drink, no matter what you, what air you breathe. So if you are having stomach pains or back pains, cramps, if your legs are not the same size, that was a clue that we had that we had no idea. She had, her right leg was larger than her left leg and she didn't know why. And I truly feel it was the beginning of blood clots. Hi, Teresa. Yay, glad you made it. Let's see. Let's see. My mom passed away. Um, colon cancer. There's another one. Anyway, uh, all of these brutal, brutal uh, cancers, uh, you have to insist. You have to insist. I'd like to know um, those of you that had the colon cancer and the ovarian cancer, did your parents, how did they find it? Let me see. My dad had blood clots in his leg and his body and it traveled through different brain making his, yes. So that's what happened. Tall girls wear heels too. Just let me know that um, her dad had the blood clots in his leg. And so a couple of years, it was actually right before I moved to Georgia, I was living with Sassy in her condo and we were trying on clothes and stuff. And she goes, look at my legs. Is that normal? Why did, why do I have one leg looks thicker than the other? Why do I have one? You know, my, her legs were uneven and we just thought, you know, it was just the way she was just the way God made her looking back now. I think that may have been when she was in the early stages. It's a guess. I don't know if, if they uh, blood clots come in the early stages, but that's what I think was happening. So um, anyway, if you go to sassysnacks.com, there's a full list and I, I've been doing the editing and I have a gal that built the, the website. Thank you, Shannon. If you're watching, I haven't done much updating to it. So I apologize for all the errors that are on there. Okay. So let me see my mom's, here we go. Uh, Maxine, my mom's cancer took three years to diagnose and it was too late. Inflammatory breast cancer. Everyone ignored the symptoms. And then she asked, was my sister healthy before this? Yeah. Um, it wasn't until we were driving to California, I mean, from California to Georgia, that the pains really started um, progressing and kicking in. The doctor, at least once a week, I'm not kidding you. And um, it took them uh, two months after that to finally diagnose her. And that's only because another doctor, she got to see another doctor by accident. Okay. Oh, Emily says, my grandma had multiple cysts, which caused her discomfort even after menopause. She lived six months. Here in six months in Portugal. Huh. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. All I can say is you demand the right test. When you see your doctor, you demand the right test. If that doctor's not going to give it to you, go to another doctor. Somebody says, all of a sudden feeling a lot of pain. Asked, cut 22, why did she like the UK so much? I don't know. I mean, I think we, we both do. I don't know. I just feel, for me, my stepdaughter was born in England. My husband was stationed there. When my husband and I went in 2009 to England and Scotland, and we had been before to Ireland, but the Republic of Ireland, not Northern Ireland, which is part of the UK. I still haven't been to Northern Ireland. We just love it. It's just so pretty. And um, the English countryside is so beautiful. Why Sassy liked it? Um, somebody once told her that when she retired, she was going to live, be living in the UK. Something to that effect. I think somebody was telling her fortune or something like that. She never went to, I'm sorry, they told her she was going to live in England. She'd never been to England, but she'd been to Scotland and she'd also been to the Republic of Ireland. And it's just beautiful there. If anybody's been there, it's just beautiful. Um, Vivian asked me if it was hard to move from California to Georgia. I mean, it wasn't easy, but <clears throat> I'd do it again in a minute, even if it was harder.
Um, but it was just expensive. Had to get rid of a lot of stuff. And um, Sassy did the same thing. She sold a lot of her things or gave them away before she left to lighten the load. My heartbreak and my sadness comes in that she finally had her beautiful home here in Georgia that wasn't connected to any walls, that had a beautiful yard and for her little dog, and that she never got to enjoy it. I mean, not even one day. So that is the tragedy of all of this. But the good thing about all of this is that we can connect and that we can talk about the signs and symptoms of pancreatic cancer and that she can still make a difference from beyond the grave. And by the way, she's not in a grave. We didn't, we didn't bury her. She insisted on her ashes, um, on her um, being cremated and her ashes, her ashes are being scattered all over the world. So she loved the world. She loved, she loved, you know, all of you, I mean, you, some of you guys here from Egypt and Malaysia and, and who, and who knows where, give me a shout out if you're from somewhere other than the U S and the UK, she loved communicating with people all over the world. And all she wanted to do was travel. Um, all we wanted to do was travel. That was the, the goal. She was going to be closer. We were going to be able to travel more. When, when she moved to, when I moved to Georgia and she stayed in California, we met in Scotland. She flew from LA and I flew from Atlanta and we met in Scotland. So, you know, the, it was going to be cool because we were going to be able to fly, both fly out of Atlanta, stay the night at her house, drive to the airport and um, both fly from Atlanta to wherever it was we wanted to go. And we, we both thought we had at least 20 years to do that. And that didn't come to be, that didn't come to pass. So, okay, this is a funny one. Hold on. I think Sassy would have liked Belfast. I think I would like Belfast too. I, I, I'm going to visit one day. Okay, so somebody asks, let me see. Sa oh, Vivian, this is a good question. When did Sassy tell you that she did YouTube videos? Was she nervous to tell you about it? Okay, yes. She, I don't know. Let me see. She's been, she did, started like around six years ago, right? And it's about 2015. Oh, well, this is what happened. You know, we always hung out together weekends and holidays and stuff like that because she only worked like, oh, sorry, she only lived two blocks away. We could walk to each other's house. 14. Anyway, she disappeared. I was like, I wasn't hearing from her. You know, what was happening? And I, so one day I caught her and I said, hey, what are you doing? How come I never see you anymore? And um, she she was like, he, 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 he. Um, I'm making ASMR videos. And of course I was like, what the heck is that? And she goes, oh, ASMR, it's this and that and blah, 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 blah. And I, I didn't know what it was. And I still didn't understand. I was like, that's weird. Is this like a you know, people who watch foot videos or, you know, people who like, you know, is this that people? Um, oh, I see somebody from Quebec and Melbourne, Australia. Thanks. Thanks for coming to visit guys. That's so awesome. So she, that's when she told me. So it was just probably about six months to a year after she had been doing it. And then I remember one day she came and she oh, came over and she told me she had 30,000 subscribers and, uh, and she was over the moon. She goes, I don't know how I did it. I don't know. I don't know how this is happening. You know, it's so weird. People like this stuff. I don't I don't get it. Then I should have brought it down, but I didn't. It's upstairs in her room. And then uh, she got her 100,000 subscriber YouTube plaque. And I, you know, I really feel like had Sassy lived, she'd be over a million. She'd be over a million now. And um, she wouldn't even have to work her her day job that she was still doing. So she was working her day job and she was making videos on the weekend. That's why I never saw her. Okay. So let's just see. I hope that answers that question. Anyway, I thought it was strange for a while. And then um, after a while, I figured out that it, she was really helping people and it worked out. Let me see. So we have the blessing that was that she was near you. This is my cousin. 
um, when this happened and not alone in California. Absolutely right. It was so true. I mean, the timing could not have been any, any better. Another sad part about it is that I, the night she was diagnosed, I, I told my husband and my son and I packed up my car and I got it and I got in and drove to the hospital. And it was about 10 PM when I got there, they were giving her the heart, the, the, strongest pain medicines they had in the emergency room and it was not working. Um, and I had to leave my family for a few months, but we've got it together again. We, we're, we're okay now, but that was, that was a very difficult, very, very difficult time. But yes, I was able to be there for her. So that was the blessing. Do you know if anyone ever recognized Sassy in public from her videos? If so, how did she react? Yes, I think two times she was recognized. Um, once in California, I know for sure, because I think she was at Joann's or one of the fabric stores buying things for her Sassy Craft uh, videos. And somebody asked her, Aren't you the, do you have a YouTube channel? And she said, yes. And if I, she, if I know her, she turned around and ran away. She did not, she did not want people knowing that she did. Matter of fact, that's why I thought that she did the half face thing because that, and the whisper, that's totally the reason why I thought she was doing her videos like that because she didn't want anybody to recognize her. But as it turns out, that was her, this was her, um, how she did things. And the whisper was part of the ASMR thing. So. Anyway, like I said, I think she turned around and ran. And then another time, I think, and if you're out there, let me know. Somebody in, when we were in Scotland, somebody said that they saw her on the Royal Mile because they knew she was traveling, but they were afraid to approach her. So I don't know if that's true or not, but I know at least a couple of people have recognized her. Oh, Bangkok. Hey, Bangkok. That's very cool. Let's see. Had he done a stool swipe when she went for her yearly gynecology exams? Okay, so that's the other thing. If your stools aren't the way they are normally, that's a clue. Very simple test. You're right. Uh, song Mozart. That's another um, way of finding uh, pancreatic cancer. I don't know if it's a heard about Sassy passing from a great YouTuber, Lady T. I was shocked and sad at the same time. Yeah. And there were a few YouTubers out there that um, really showed Sassy some love. Uh, I think it was Wilson Eats, um, Be Love, Lady T. Oh, there was another couple. Another two or three, and I apologize if I can't remember, but some some people donated to her uh, GoFundMe campaign, and um, some of the YouTubers uh, gave their 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 YouTube paychecks to the GoFundMe campaign. So um, thank you, thank you guys for doing that. I want to acknowledge you and let you know that we know you're out there and we know what you did, and I want to thank you. Another one from Quebec, Canada. And hi, Cedric. Hey, let's see. Watching from Arkansas, Kaney Salazar. Do I watch ASMR videos, Martha A? Sometimes, and I only watch my sister, and I only watch her when I miss her terribly. So I'm, I'm glad that she left that for us because most people don't get that. Um, from their loved ones. And she left us a hundred and almost 200 videos, I think, to watch over and over again on Sassy Snacks and Sassy Crafts. Uh, but she's really the only one that I watch. I have dabbled in some others just to see what they're up to. But um, I know that I just don't have the time, especially if I'm making videos. And then right now I'm making the... Um, I'm making the masks for medical people and um, I make jewelry when I'm, you know, I just do things to keep my mind busy and my hands busy so that I am not always sad and depressed when I'm thinking about my sister. 
After cooking videos, Ladita. Yeah, you know, like I said, she was a good cook. And she enjoyed doing those. I'm not a good cook. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm trying. But she loved doing her cooking videos. And um, I'm glad you enjoyed them as well. I wish she had done more. Do you know her favorite ASMR YouTubers? Oh. Hungry cakes, hungry snacks. She was one who helped out too. She was subscribed to a lot of them, um, but I really don't know which ones were her absolute favorite. And I know she she communicated with a few um, online, but I don't know which ones were her absolute favorite. Okay. Cat Keys says, my mom passed away in 2014 of colon cancer. She had no signs whatsoever. They did a blood test and saw that her white blood cell count was elevated, and that's how they found her cancer. Okay, so that's another thing. Every year, go to the doctor. In the U.S., if you have insurance, and there was a time when we were all had to have it, you're paying for that annual physical. So get your annual physical and make sure that they do the blood work. Is it always going to catch cancer? No, because Sassy had it and it did not catch it. But in this case of um, Cat Keys, uh, that's how they found her mother's colon cancer. So if you're not going to get the tests every year, then you're not going to know that you have it. Um, I think colon two, when you're 50 years old, I think in the U.S., you have to have a colonoscopy. Have to. Well, you don't have to, but you're kind of silly if you don't, because that's the common age when it comes up. Ladita, her torta de patatas is my favorite. I think of her every time I make it. Very cool. What happened to her animals? Um, Widge died February before she died. So he died in February 2018, and she had kept him alive. I got her, Mr. Darcy, her um, miniature dachshund, in December of 2018 after she was diagnosed. She wanted a dog, and she was very hopeful that she would survive the pancreatic cancer. And she wanted a dog, so I went down. My son and I drove five hours each way to go pick her up a dog. I have him now. I have Mr. Darcy. And if you follow me on Instagram, um, you will find some pictures of Mr. Darcy. He is the black one that looks like he has a line, like his face is split in half. Um, he's half dapple and half black and tan, and he's he's just a sweetheart, and we love him to death. Okay, by the way, afternoon delight is now stuck in my head. <laughs> when you hang up, everybody, when we get off today, go play afternoon delight and think of sassy. Somebody, see, somebody's writing something stupid. Dude, just let it go already. She passed away. Quit. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, I have a miniature dachshund called Zeka. He sends love. And from Portugal. Awesome. Well, you guys, it is now 1-12 or 1312 here in the U.S. of A, Georgia, New York City time. And I think I'm going to call it a day. It's been an hour. I just want to thank you guys for joining and taking a walk down memory lane with me, taking this time to remember Sassy on this very, very difficult day uh, for her mom and her sister and myself and the rest of her family, and especially for her friends and all of you guys out there that subscribe to her and weren't haters like Madison Skeens is. Sassy meant a lot to us. Her, her message after her death is to go to the doctor and get checked. So Sassy's very good friend, Janet, sent this to me from New Jersey. It's a Sassanac candle. And remember, Sass Sassanac is where Sassy got the name Sassy Snacks from the, movie, the show Outlander. So I'm going to light the candle today and I'm going to leave it on in her memory 
for the rest of the day. And I hope that you guys will light a candle for her tonight. Just remember her life and what she gave. Don't forget to share if you have dreams about her. I want to hear about you guys on Instagram. All right, you guys. We miss you, Sassy. That doesn't go like there it is. You're forever in our hearts and on our minds, and you will not be forgotten. Bye, guys. Love you guys. Ta-ta for now.